As a cat owner, I've been itching to watch this video for a long time. I know Casual Geographic's videos are absolutely fantastic. <laughs> What's better than a cat video on the internet? Sound like I'm from 2008. Oh my God, what in the- Things going crazy. Mama, come get it. Dude, he's that cat's fighting back two dogs at once. Oh Lord, grab the girl hand. Don't worry, he's fine. <laughs> he just went for the close line. Term used to describe a character so overpowered that they make the game stop. Everyone always says that dogs hunt cats, dogs go after cats. It's not true. Cats go after dogs. They're so pissed all the time. Dogs usually just want to be friends unless they're out in the wild. If it's in a home, they just want to be friends. They just want to hang out. Every single video I see of a dog and a cat fighting is the cat will start it, the dog will try to run away, and then the cat will hiss at them and try and slap them with their big claws. Functioning as intended and exploit the game's balance in their favor. Well. If cats aren't the most broken animals on the planet, God must have discontinued first place. That's all true. I mean, he's literally right. Just think about it. They have conditioned humans to take care of them completely. They have insane reflexes. They can survive falls from towers. They have crazy senses. They're incredibly quick. They have claws built into their hands. Imagine if we had claws built into our hands. How strong would we be? We'd be a lot better off, I think. Talk a lot about animals that got shafted by evolution. In fact, my most popular video today was about 10 of them. Well, if I ever do a video on nature's favorites, cats would show surely be at the very top. Cats are arguably the most successful predators we've ever seen. With so many oh, dude, look at you'd swear it was plot armor. I don't even want to make this intro too long, so here's 10 superpowers your cat has that you <laughs> may or may not have known. Why are they like that? Why do they just hit things? Why is their natural disposition to just smack whatever is closest and to them? Number one, zero fall damage. You've probably heard that cats always land on their feet, but the real flex is being able to fall from heights that would have any human furnishing a coffin. A 1987 study showed that out of 132 cats that were brought to an emergency vet in New York City after falling out of a high rise, 90% lived and less than 40% required life-saving treatment. That's out of a high rise. Do you realize how big those are? They just negate fall damage. They have a passive buff that allows them to be completely immune to it. And the real explanation is that they do this weird thing where they spread themselves out like a kite, and it actually does something with wind resistance, scientific things. It just slows their roll so they just land on their feet and they're completely fine. They're insane. It gets even wilder when you realize that cats actually have a better chance of getting airdrop from the building and ah! off the higher they're- See, that cat is somehow fine. That's terrifying, by the way. But he did the thing. He did the- uh, Like that. He turns into a kite. Yeah, it was. And it's all because cats understand physics. You see, when you're in free fall, you accelerate towards the ground until you reach terminal velocity, where you literally can't fall any faster. When cats reach TV, they splay their legs and kind of just parachute the rest of the way down. And instead of landing on their feet, they break their fall with oh their chest. Obviously, That's a raccoon. They completely tank the hit, but thanks to their relatively large surface area to weight ratio, they maximize the points of contact that smack the ground and therefore minimize the damage. And Being able to minimize 99% of fall damage is an incredible ability that predators, honestly, they need it. Stuff like that, especially on rocky mountains, vistas, and in high rises made by humans. Not really These natural, but still helps. Life long beef with gravity. Cats that reach terminal velocity instinctively know not to tense up, but instead relax and basically turn themselves into a kite on the way down. The thing is, if they don't have time to reach terminal velocity, they end up getting hurt way worse. So like in a weird twist, cats that fall from two to seven stories actually end up more down bad than the ones that touch earth from 10 stories up. In fact, cats have about a 95% chance of falling from 10 stories and living. Meanwhile, the average human has a 95% chance of getting outlined with chalk. Oh, and don't think the cut off 10 <laughs> stories either. One cat named Sabrina took a 32 story oh, express oh my to the ground and walked away with only a punctured lung and a chipped tooth. Not was that Sabrina? Oh my god, that thing looks so beaten up. That cat looks like it's been through the wars. That cat looks like it was World War II. Not to mention she was released and sent home two days later. Being impervious to fall damage is how snow leopards can not only make a living in the Himalayas, but can legit fall clear off a cliff and the only injury they take is to their pride. Speaking oh, of- Oh no, he's fine. Did you know cats are actually built to predict the weather? You see, cat hair what? attracts static electricity, so they can pick up on the buildup of electrical charge that often comes before a really bad storm. And the cat's inner ears are sensitive to sudden drops in atmospheric pressure, which announce the arrival of a cloud assault. Cats, cats in their ears are like form changes for them. Whenever they're mad, they get the airplane ears that kind of go a little bit far back. Whenever they're happy, they have a face in the front. They twitch and they can change the directions. Whenever there's something that goes off behind them, there's a little... There's a little sound behind them. It immediately turns around so they can hear what's going on behind them. I wish humans had other forms like that. Technically, so can we. It's why our ears do the most and pop on a plane, but it's just that cat ears are that much more sensitive. And they can even smell rain and lightning coming. It's so OP that sailors used to use cats aboard ships as a four-legged four cats. Okay, yeah. They say that they wanted to use the cat on ship because they were like, no, boss, listen to me. 
I have to have this cat on my ship. We need to be able to predict the weather. They're super good at predicting the weather, boss, please. The only way we'll be able to make it is if we can predict the weather. There's no other way, boss. We have to have the cat on the ship. And he's like, all right, private. Well, I'll let you have that cat on that ship, but you best believe. If I find out that you've been lying to me, you're going to get the boot. For forecast. No, no, yeah, forecast. Apparently a cat with the zoomies means you could expect strong winds. A cat that sneezes will warn you of heavy rain. And apparently if one licked their fur against a grain mid-sail, then you better make like God's golfing because it's finna hail. Now, to be fair, months surrounded by nothing but sea and sea men gives you a lot of time to just make stuff up. I that sounds like folklore. It really sounds like one of those old seamen tales when you go out, because they're so superstitious. The, the seaman was so superstitious back in the day. Anything meant something. <laughs> I mean, just how many sea monster stories was just a whale freeing his willy? But there might be some truth Wait, to is that, cat is that, is that whale call? often spend extra time licking themselves before a bad storm since having damn fur helps with the static thing I told you about. So basically, if cats could talk, we'd see a lot of meteorologists on unemployment. And speaking of no job, cats really managed to finesse their way into living in nearly 50 million homes in America rent-free. And one of the biggest reasons is because cats are the best manipulators nature has to offer. And if you think they aren't... No, that's not true. My cat loves me. Mark, you don't even know it. Oh. According to researchers at the University of Sussex, many cats will exploit their owners with a soliciting purr. It's more high frequency, triggers a sense of urgency in humans, and even someone resembles the cry of an infant, and we just have to assume that's intentional. And in experiments, not only did humans have a faster response time when hearing that purr compared to a normal one, it even affected people that never owned cats. This yeah, that's true. Cats don't actually meow out in the wild. They don't make much noise at all because probably bad for predators. You make a little noise, hyena's gonna come and eat your gullet. But when they're around humans, they figure it out. They're like, <laughs> these idiots love it when we just make noise. We just have to make noise and they will dote on this. They'll pet us, they'll house us, they'll give us food, they'll give us food, they'll give us so much food. And all we have to do is just say morale every now and then. That's crazy. This distress purr likely triggers a deep, innate nurturing response in humans, meaning you're literally hardwired to answer to it no matter what you were doing before. So apparently cats understand psychology too. That's not even really a joke because adult cats almost never meow to each other, but kittens do it with their mothers for food and warmth. And we have to assume they just figured out it works on humans too. And it's not just pet cats with this talent. Tigers have been known to imitate the sounds of their prey to lull them into a false sense of security. Tigers have reportedly mimicked sandbar deer and black bears. Big cats terrify me. I'm as much of a cat lover as the next person. I'm a base centrist. I'm a cat and a dog enjoyer at the same time. I don't know if my cat was any bigger, I, I would be dead. There's no beating around the bush. I would be dead. He would kill me. He would slit my throat. He would take all the food and he'd probably be off. Big cats, so scary. I would never be around a big cat. You can't trust them. You never know what they're gonna do. Bro, just, just listen to this. Are you mooing because you want to be one with the cows? Oh my god. I don't think that's oh, that's so cows sick. Into coming over there. The TikTok user is Caitlin the Keeper. I assume that she does a lot of videos with tigers. That's so scary. I literally freak out every time I see anyone around a tiger. Because if you turn around, there's no guarantee you're going to make it out. If you turn around and a tiger is looking at you, they see you turn your back to them, it is over. You don't, you can't run. They're faster than you. They got better reflexes. They're stronger. And it's not just tigers. The South American Margay will verbally cosplay as a baby monkey just to murk its parents like a Disney movie. And clearly the manipulation tactics were passed down. In fact, cats are so good at working people that they'd actually be great politicians. Mr. President? Which is probably how Mayor Stubbs of Talkeena, Alaska stayed in office for 20 years, even surviving assassination attempts by dogs, BB guns, and a deep fryer. <laughs> are we gonna get more context to that or? There's another special ability. Okay, we're just gonna move on. No, that's fine. I didn't want context to that at all. Let's go. Mayor Subs the Cat was a cat who was honorary mayor of Tolkienta, Alaska, until his death in 2017. For 20 years! Good God, that's a lot. He was elected after a write-in campaign by voters who opposed the human candidates. Oh my God, imagine being in an election and losing to a fucking cat. It's over, your political career is over, your life is over at that point, your wife will leave you, your kids will leave you, your cat will leave you, you gotta pack up, you gotta move to a different country because you will be made fun of every time you go outside, they'll be like, ha ha, look at that, that was the guy that lost the cat. He was, he was in, you see the election? He lost to a, he lost to a cat, remember that? In 2013, he was attacked by a dog. He was placed under heavy sedation at a veteran hospital of 70 miles away, having suffered a punctured lung. Oh my days. He was shot. Wait, he was shot by teenagers with BB guns, fall into a restaurant's deep fryer, which was switched off and cool at the time. 
Ooh, oily cat. I want to know who these teenagers were. I don't think the capital punishment is the way that we should go as a society. I think capital punishment is cruel. I think that as a society and governments in general should be above that, above using death as a threat, keep the commoners scared and under their heel. However, I think that maybe we should make an exception this time. ability cats have, and it could arguably be the most overpowered of all. Pretty privilege. It's how dolphins got Flipper, orcas got Free Willy. Meanwhile, the best movie deal shark management could get them was being typecast as Jaws. You see, there's this thing called baby schema. It basically means that humans have an intrinsic bias towards a certain set of facial features in people and animals, to the point where it just makes us want to protect them. And with their big head, wide eyes, and round forehead, cats Look at him. literally remind us of babies. And even this though baby. it's a fluff from nature, cats will 100% play into this by figuring out what combination of ear wiggling, whisker pointing, and eye narrowing gets the best response from people. Now add the fact that slow blinking with your cat can trigger oxytocin in both of you, the literal hormone that bonds a mother to her child, and you can see how cats were basically engineered to be irresistible. It no, cats are better. They don't talk back. Actually, that's not true. Cats definitely talk back. My cat talks back to me all of the time. It's pretty privileged on every steroid possible. And it's wild because if any other animal had a reputation for cold indifference and global genocide, it'd be cause of pause, but because it's cats, we just let it slide. Cat cuteness virtually has us in a choke. Oh god, okay, I'm gonna be honest. This might be a controversial opinion. Cats look like this, with their massive bulging heads. I'm sorry, that's kind of ugly. And I said virtual for a reason. It said that 50% of all internet traffic is driven by cat content. That's 50% of all the stuff on the internet. 50% of my TikTok for you page is just cat content. I want you to think about that during this ad. Matter of fact, and I'm willing to put money on it. For some of y'all, this ad's about to be cat related. Oh, oh okay. Back. Oh, by the way, was it was it cat related? Wait, hold on. Oh, I have YouTube Premium. I didn't see an ad. However, YouTube Premium actually gives more money to the creator. So technically, I'm doing a solid for YouTubers by watching with Premium. I, I guess I don't I'm know. I'm actually curious. But the thing that almost always gets forgotten is that cats give back as much as they take, which leads to their next flex: healing powers. And not just for them. Science says having a cat living under your roof easily extends your subscription to oh life. My God. Studies show that cat owners are 40% less likely to suffer a heart attack and have a 30% less chance of getting clapped by cardiovascular complications. And since cardiovascular disease is one of the leading causes of preventable death today, cats are like a real life one-up. Not to mention kids that grew up around cats have less of a chance of getting folded by allergies. Especially if the exposure started in early infancy or even while they're still in the womb waiting room. And then it's crazy because as asshole as cats actually are, like they'll be a dick to you. They're pretty reasonable. You can reason with a cat. It's all about the consent, right? If a cat paws at you, scratches at you, it's because they already gave you like 20 different signs that they didn't want to be touched and you were like, no, oh, but the little baby, I want to pet his head. It might have pawed you away, it might have like shied away, it might have, might have done that. And then it only attacks you when, when you've gone past the line of consent. And also they understand babies. They won't attack a baby. When was the last time you said a, saw a cat attack a baby? Probably not very often, because they understand that they're little humans. And if they attack them, it's probably gonna be pretty bad. They'll, they won't attack kittens either. Cats will attack each other. They usually won't attack kittens. Then there's the fact that just petting a cat can nerf stress levels and blood pressure. But if you really want to get literal about it, cats purr at a frequency that's said to improve bone density, repair tendons, and promote healing. I never really fully- What? I mean, we should get cats in the hospital then, clearly. Understood it, but apparently cats purr at a frequency that transmits vibrations throughout the body. Vibrations that help increase blood flow to the affected area, thereby bringing more nutrients. It's also believed that those same vibrations can help with soft tissue injuries like sprains and strains. I know I said they live rent free, but considering all they do to carry our health, again, I, I feel like we could let it slide. It's not just a buff to your health either. I vividly remember seeing a bunch of surveys that said that on dating sites actually find men with cats more attractive. Something about seeming more nurturing or emotionally intelligent. On an unrelated note, I want to meet my editor and content manager, Aslan. Yeah. Wait, is that is that true? Leo, Leo, get in here! I, I need some I need some pictures for Tinder. He doesn't come in when I'm streaming. He doesn't like the loud noises. He's telling me to shut up. Little does he know that pays for his food. That's sick though. That's so good. I didn't realize that was the case. Just having a cat it increases your chances on on on, on dating apps. Need to get some more pictures on Hinge. Clearly. Say hi, Ashley. Say hi. Huh? Oh. Good boy. That is adorable. I that, that thing is so big. Apparently there was a switch up, and now women find cat owners less attractive. So on another unrelated note. So Bitch, really? No! God damn it! I thought we were in the clear now. W women find single men with cats less dateable. Sorry, cat lovers, you're on your own. Male cat owners less attractive. Colorado State study finds. You know what? You know what? Fuck Colorado. Also, this is dog propaganda. This is from a dog o day website. It's also on the New York Post. 
People.com says women are less likely to date men with cats. And God, it's less masculine, more neurotic. Neurotic? What? You know what? Pfft, fuck women if that's what they think. <laughs> yeah, he isn't mine. I'm actually just cat sitting for a friend. Shout out to you, Yusuf. Yeah, but anyway, cat plot armor is so strong that it might Yeah, just I think that's cat. Listen, Colorado, not even a real place. Why do we care about what people in Colorado think? When was the last time we ever thought, hmm, I wonder how someone in Colorado thinks about this. I think we can disregard that study. That study doesn't mean anything. Be able to save you from cancer. We've all heard the stories of feline physicians detecting it in people before anyone else could. Cats have a sense of smell about 14 times stronger than humans with their 200 million odor receptors to our pitiful, almost embarrassing five. Five. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Tumors produce volatile organic compounds, and these VOCs leave the body through sweat and breath. And there's a lot of respected researchers out there that will die on the hill that cats can sniff it out the same way dogs can. In 2018, rescue cat Mia climbed on owner Michelle Pearson's chest and wouldn't get off for anything, sniffing and pawing at, you know, the right one, while also meowing and looking at her as, as oh my cats God. do. It wasn't until her husband spot. checked for himself that he felt the telltale lump, and that's how the cat that was rescued from certain death ended up returning to favor and saving her owner from stage 2 breast cancer. Well, hold on, they don't do a very good job at explaining it. Like, how am I supposed to know that crawling onto someone's chest and pawing on a certain area of their body means that it needs immediate medical attention? I thought they were just being cuddly. They need to do a better job of explaining, maybe throw an opposable thumb, write it down, or turn the meows into English so that I can understand it. Not Spanish or Japanese, because I don't understand those languages, though I would like to eventually one day. It has to be English, okay guys? And that's not even much of a reach considering there's also stories of cats warning their diabetic owners of their potentially fatally low blood sugar. Either that, or cats can see the future and they'll choose to keep you in theirs if they like you enough. And even that's low-key valid considering superpower number seven is that cats have ultra instinct. Those whiskers can detect sudden changes in air currents to figure out the size, shape, and speed of nearby objects. It's like a whole radar system growing out of their face, and it's how a blindfolded cat is still hell on earth for any mouse in the area. Aww. Bro, I still don't think you're understanding just how much of a cheat whiskers are. Cats can even use their whiskers to blind figure out- Blind cat. Why are there so many blind cats? I see blind cats more than I see blind anything else. More than blind people, blind dogs, blind mice. Oh, well, I mean, there's only three blind mice. So, I guess that's kind of hard to match with. The direction their prey is trying to dodge it in right before they pounce, allowing them to cut off any possible escape routes. Now to us, it's interesting and pretty cool, but to a mouse trying to make it home to his family, that's gotta be some bullshit. And cats don't just have them on their face, they have whiskers all over. And you can't even play dead with the cats since they have carpal whiskers that allow them to tell if their prey is playing or, you know, actually past tense. And honestly, oh my God, this, this thing is so screwed. Ability cats have. It's basically impossible. There's something really deranged about filming your cat murdering a mouse. <laughs> like, come on, let the poor thing go. Cats kill things for fun. Just let it go. Catch a cat slipping. They don't have to hear you. They don't even have to smell you. All it takes is a smallest change in air currents to dry snitch on you. But as predators, cats are the ones that do the sneaking, which only makes their next ability even more. Oh no. Prey. Oh, I see. I like mice as well, though. I really, I feel bad for this thing. That's so sad. Mice are cool. They're just little guys. They just want to hang out. Rats are, rats are cool too. You know, if they're not just scavenging and trying to steal food from me, which I've had rats in my house trying to steal food from me, and I've had mice in my house too. Obviously, stealing is wrong and we shouldn't do that, but they're just hanging out. You can get one as a pair. I think that's cool. Mice as a pair is great. Superpower number eight. Cats are athletic freaks of nature. No, seriously. Cats are the most athletic group of animals on earth, and I'm going to stand on that. There might not be a single event at the Olympics that one of the 40 flavors of feline can flex on us in. You want Damn, speed? look at them go. Cheetahs can go 0 to 60 in 3 seconds and can peak out at over 70 miles per hour. A cheetah on a Sunday morning yeah, like two seconds. get pulled over on the turnpike, ain't that crazy? Want to see some Ooh. long jumping? Cougars can clear 45 feet horizontally on an off day. You want to see a cat get high minus the catnip? The serval jumps so high that their meal prep literally involves pimp slapping birds right oh, now. And for power let lifting, go. you have a literal deadlift by a leopard using only its teeth. Yes, that what? Is yes, that is a giraffe. And speaking of what? Lemons, they're also gymnasts on steroids that turn trees into jungle. Oh my! And if you think you're that's seriously impressive, did that lion just fall into the water? The smoke and water. <laughs> Keep in mind that the caiman is part of one of the most successful group of predators in history. And all it took was an aquatic equalizer in the form of a cat to wreck their entire game plan. Nah, they're OP. It is straight up broken. I'm completely on board with the cat agenda. The cat propaganda has gotten to me. They're ridiculously overpowered. They need a bit of a nerf. Like, whoever's up there programming the game, we need to tone something down because clearly these guys are way too good. Not to mention jaguars have been seen swimming clear across the Panama Canal. Yeah, that one. Also, they have a hydraulic press for a jaw. God help you if you get caught in it. And all I need to say about tigers is that this is an Indian gar. And even this walking Red Bull logo can get choked out by a 500 pound striped Giggle Garfield. 
And I don't even need to say anything about lions. Those triceps speak for themselves. Whoa! Cats are nature's population control. That's a lot of muscle. anywhere on earth outside of the devil's iceberg that doesn't have some kind of cat running it. Even the travel size ones are a menace. The deadliest cat in the world is the African black-footed cat. And because of their metabolism, not only can they catch up to 15 bodies a night, they also have a hunting success rate of 60%. Not even lions, tigers, Damn. can touch that. There's a reason why domestic cats put billions of animals on shirts a year. And sometimes they turn entire Dude, I love the butt wiggle. You know when you're playing with your cat, they do a little butt wiggle? What is the purpose of the butt wiggle? It prepares their muscles before a big leap. Pouncing is a big energy intensive movement for cats, so a wiggle could help flex their back legs to reduce the risk of an injury. It's so funny to watch though. Species into history lessons. And unlike their wild cousins, a lot of times with domestic cats, they do it just for fun. Yeah, you think it's cute, but it's bloodlust. And if you're a mouse and op with whiskers, Oh, dude, the eyes! When you see the full black eyes, and it just widens so quickly when you see the full black eyes and it's staring at you, it's over. Like, you're getting attacked whether you like it or not. It's like Thanos. They do be inevitable. Especially when you factor superpower number nine. Cats can teleport. I'm dead serious. Cats do this thing where they just spawn wherever the plot needs them the most. Yeah. As solitary <laughs> hunters, cats can cover insane amounts of distance in times that really make no sense. Take mountain lions, for example. Young male cougars will often travel hundreds of miles away from their mother's territory to find their own. In 2009, a tagged cougar took a walk that took him from Black Hills, South Dakota, all the way to Greenwich, Connecticut. Basically, what? he went from Mount Rushmore to 30 miles from Manhattan. And it's not just cougars that go cross country. A tiger named T1 managed to walk 800 miles across India in only a few months, fueled by nothing but the power of horny. And of course, there's a the story of El Jefe, a jaguar that randomly I mean, who hasn't walked 800 miles because they were horny before, you know what I mean? He showed up in Arizona, just outside Tucson. I could really keep going. From June 2017 to July 2018, a young lynx trekked from a wildlife refuge in Alaska all the way into the heart of the Yukon. A trip that totaled 2,174 miles. Just under 3,500 kilometers. Ridiculous. His name was Hobo, by the way. Can't Hobo? But the best story of teleporting cats was Clementine Jones. She was a cat in New York whose family left her behind because they were moving. This is, is this Zelda music? And they figured the trip would be too hard on a pregnant cat. Oh, little did they know. Clementine spent a couple of months with her kittens and then one day just headed out and popped up at her old family's home 1,600 miles away in Denver. And it's no, how do they know? Like, how do they know which direction to go in? Surely they know where their house is because when you live in a place and you live in an area for long enough, you get to know the lay of the land. But if you're 1,600 miles away, how do you even know which direction to go in? Did they just remember the way that they had come the first time and they just went the opposite direction? Is their memory really that good? I struggle to remember where I walked 15 minutes ago when I'm in a new city. It's not even like the family got tricked by a dupe. Clementine was born with an extra toe and had a burn mark on her shoulder. There was no mistaking her. There's only one cat power that's arguably more impressive and you saw it coming as soon as you clicked on this video. Superpower number 10, mind control. And it's all because of a little parasite called, you know the name, Toxoplasma Gandhi. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't know Toxoplasma Gandhi? Any Toxoplasma Gandhi fans, guys? Let, make yourself known, it starts hey. When this parasite enters a cat, because they literally only reproduce in their bowels, and their eggs don't get past until the cat has a movement, usually an oh. box. Now here's the problem. The Toxoplasma Gandhi needs to find a way back into the cat in order to hit restart on its life cycle, and the best way to do that is by setting up shop inside one of the animals on its grocery list. The only issue is, no mouse that values its life is going anywhere near a death sentence with toe beans to make it happen. So the parasite, <laughs> which by the way basically uses the mouse as a layover, they begin to rewire its brain in order to remove the fear of cats. And I don't even know oh how it infected- No shot. There's a parasite out there that latches onto mice and it's like, hey, no, buddy, you want to hang out with that cat? You see, that guy's actually your friend. You've been fed a lot of propaganda about cats recently, Mr. Mouse. It's not actually going to attack you. It's actually your friend. Remember, the cats are friends. Did mice can even start feeding for cat pee. With more irrational confidence than the father of four in an Instagram model's comments, it's easier for the mouse to get body bagged by its number one op, thus repeating this vicious mouse murking cycle. And of course, we now believe that when this same parasite invades us, they do the same thing they would to a mouse. Which is why popular opinion is that the Toxoplasma parasite causes an unreasonable attraction to cats. Oh my god, is that real? There's something in cat poop that makes you mind controlled to like cats? The parasite can continue its life cycle throughout the cat's body? Okay, I don't know. That makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, I didn't consent to that. And it's possible that this factory reset of our personality is due to the parasite making enzymes that control dopamine. And it's not just humans that can get infected. Turns out, afflicted hyena cubs end up bolder in the face of lions, which is a great way for them to get invited to a meet and greet with Mufasa. It's not 100% proven 
proven that the parasite's responsible for all the cat people in the world, but hear me out. There's proof that this parasite was- Oh my god, cat people aren't just weird. They're mind controlled. Well, I feel like we should be a little bit nicer to them because they can't help it. It's the parasite. Present in ancient Egyptian mummies. And these were the people that straight up worshipped them. Not to mention up to a third of all people alive right now have it and most have no idea. And that's why I say cats have the wildest plot armor I've ever seen. Because real talk, only cats could spit yeah, I have a it. infection into a way of living right free. Trust me, I would know. Isn't that right, Maple? Yeah, no, I definitely have it. He has two cats! And that's why he's the girl. the most broken animals in nature. Dude, that's why I got one. That's, I feel, maybe I should get another cat. May, I, I feel like maybe I should get another cat now. Well, there's only one way I can afford another cat. If that's, that's if you watch another video and then I can get more ad revenue. And please subscribe to Casual Geographic as well. You just saw how good that video is. Don't you want to watch another? Just go ahead, just go on. I'm not mind controlling you. I'm not like the cats.